Hey, I'm Mr. Wynn, and welcome to biology. You're about to enter a field of science in which you study life, and you study all living organisms, and how they interact with their environment. You'll learn about their physical structure, their internal makeup, their chemical processes, and how they develop and survive. Biology is a large branch of science. There are so many topics to learn about. This would include evolution, ecology, understanding our climate, medicine, human biology, plants and animals, genetics, cells, the list goes on. There's a lot to learn. But in any branch of biology, there are some unifying themes that help make it more coherent and easier to understand for the average student. The first theme of biology. The cell is the most basic unit of life. They're the building block to all living things. They have the biological parts that allow them to carry out functions in your body, and over time they can reproduce and allow the organism to grow and develop in their environment. The second theme of biology. Genes carry genetic information. Parents pass on these genes to their offspring, and eventually these genes allow the offspring to express certain traits and characteristics and adaptations that allow them to survive in the wild. The last theme of biology. Evolution is the engine of change. What this means is certain advantageous traits that allow an animal to survive tend to be passed on to the next generation. Over many generations, you start to see a species develop and thrive in that environment. There is organization of life at all levels. These are known as systems in biology. So for example, someone who's studying ecology might want to keep track of the food webs and how predator and prey interact, and also the living and non-living things that make up a certain lake or marsh or swamp, and how that ecological system thrives. Someone who's studying cell biology might want to know about all the cell parts, and how those cell parts such as nucleus, ribosomes, mitochondria, cell membrane, how all these parts are organized, and how they build a cell, and what allows that cell to function. There are more examples of systems in biology. Just take the human body for instance. You're just not a random blob of just like body parts all strewn together. Your nose, your eyes, your mouth, your ears are all in the right spot. They all serve a form and a function. Likewise, when an organism is put together, there's a certain level of organization. And you start with the smallest, which is the atom. Atoms make up molecules. Molecules make up macromolecules. Those go on to make organelles. Organelles organize into cells. Cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs. Organs make up organ systems. And when you have an organ system all working together, you have an organism. You have you. You can expand upon this even further. Once you have an organism, you can see how that organism interacts with all the organisms and all the other species in an ecosystem. And then you have many ecosystems combining to form biospheres, and then biospheres make up our Earth. Another big idea in biology is structure and function. Again, you're just not a blob made of random parts. The way that you're built has a certain purpose. If you look at a cheetah, it has a streamlined body that allows it to quickly accelerate and make explosive movements, allowing it to be one of the fastest land mammals on Earth. However, if you contrast that with a turtle, the turtle is extremely slow, but it's been able to survive for many generations against all these scary predators because it has a hard shell that it can retreat inside of. Nature has a way of making things fit and work together efficiently. Structure determines function. Certain proteins have certain shapes, and they can take on molecules and break them down. So for example, in the picture next to me, you have an enzyme which can break down sucrose. Sucrose is a complex sugar, and when your body is working to digest something, it needs really simple sugars. So what happens is this enzyme breaks down sucrose to form glucose and fructose, which the body can then readily digest. The structure of something was not made by accident. They serve a purpose and have a function. So if you contrast the three different types of muscle cells, you would find that smooth muscle cells are found mainly in the digestive system, and they're made of thin sheets, which allows them to contract involuntarily and move food along. Meanwhile, cardiac muscle cells are short and narrow, and this allows them to pump and contract. Lastly, you have skeletal muscles, which are tough fibrous bands, 
and this allows them to stretch and to contract, which allows you to move. Another big idea in biology is something called homeostasis. And to put it in a way that you can easily understand, it's basically, if something's broken, you need to fix it immediately, otherwise you'll run into trouble. Homeostasis is the maintenance of constant internal conditions that allow you to live comfortably. If you're doing intense exercise in the sun, you might overheat and suffer from heat stroke if your body didn't have the right tools to correct this. So if you're overheating, what your body can do is sweat to cool down, or something called vasodilation, which means the blood vessels come nearer to the surface of your skin, and this allows heat to dissipate from your body. But what if your structure didn't allow you to sweat to cool down? So in the case of dogs, they have fur all around so they can't sweat. So what they do instead is they pant to dissipate heat. Once again, homeostasis is basically if something is wrong, you need to fix or correct the problem right away. So if you're thirsty, drink some water. If you're hungry, eat some food. If you're bleeding, your body will start to clot blood so it won't leak. Homeostasis is maintained through something called negative feedback. So the analogy for homeostasis is kind of like it's the house's thermostat, which keeps your house at a stable temperature. So if you're getting cold, you might start to shiver. But if you overheat or you're getting hot, then you'll start to sweat. This negative feedback is basically a loop that allows you to return back to normal conditions. Negative feedback is basically a loop that allows an organism to return back to its normal, stable conditions. That's what homeostasis is, and it allows an organism to live comfortably and to make sure all its internal parts are running smoothly and properly. Hey guys, I think I'll pause this video here and we'll call this part one. But before I go, I'll provide you with a summary of what we just learned. So, we learned that there are a few unifying themes in biology, and that is cells are the most basic unit of life, genes carry genetic information, and evolution is the engine of change. Next, we learned about systems, which means that life is organized in a certain way. After that, we learned about structure and function, which means that the way that something's built serves a purpose. And lastly, we learned about homeostasis, which is an organism's attempt to correct what's wrong and to make sure that its internal conditions are working properly to survive. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Wind Biology.